had such a blast in Seoul that I decided to pick some of my favorite things to do in the city. And it all starts with this lovely river cruise that treats you to some pretty views of the city skyline. It's not too long and if the weather behaves, it's really pleasant. There's also indoor entertainment with this incredible band that did stunning instrumental covers of popular tracks. One of the most visited places in the city is the Gyeongbokgung Palace. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, but I really hope I did. There are a couple of palaces in Seoul, but this is the main one and probably the most visited. If you happen to visit in the morning and check the timings, you can also catch the change of guard ceremony. Now, they aren't really royal guards, they're actors recreating a scene, but it's still very entertaining and makes for great videos. The day I ended up actually visiting the palace was a bit gloomy with rain and I missed all the sunshine from the day before but still very pleasant weather. Okay, I am here at the Gyeongbokchong Palace and it is raining so unfortunately I'm all covered up but it's actually really nice weather. It's quiet, there are not that many tourists and it's really pretty. walking around the palace and I I love this I feel like I'm on my private tour because there's nobody look at it look at it look at it, look at it. it's just me <laughs> but it's really nice it's just sad that because it was raining I couldn't dress up in this traditional uh, hanbok outfit which I would have liked to like those girls behind me they look so cute and then I found the cutest two girls who were happy to pose for me in their outfit, which was really sweet of them. Right next to the palace is the Bakchon Hanok village, which is a neighborhood of old traditional Korean houses. People still live here, so you need to be respectful when you visit. It's a big tourist spot and it can get crowded at times, but if you're patient or you explore a little, you can find a pretty spot in the village and it makes for great photos. Hongdae or Hongdae Street, named after the university nearby, is a shopper's paradise. At any given time, it's flooded with young locals hanging out and shopping for trendy Korean fashion and beauty products. But a lot of them are actually just trying to showcase their talents by performing in the street and expressing their art. There's an entire street dedicated to them and it's a great place to do some people watching. A visit to Seoul's end tower starts with a short cable car ride up the hill. And one of the first things you'll notice even before the actual TV tower is the amount of love locks all over. They're actually running out of place to put them but folks seem to love it. The minute you get off the cable car and you're up on the hill, you're treated to some spectacular views. So you don't actually need to even buy a ticket and go up to the tower. You can just hang out at this spot, sit at the cafes, enjoy the view, or maybe take some photos.
food. Oh my gosh, you can't miss the amazing street food in Seoul. And I've got a detailed video on that and I'll put the link to that in the description box. So make sure you check it out. But pro tip, when you're in Seoul, just eat on the street. So that was it. That was my things you should do when you are in Seoul video. Um, of course, it's not everything that you should do. There's a lot more, but I feel like these will give you a little bit of an essence of what the city is like. And um, hopefully if you've done other things or if you've been, I'd love to hear um, what you did or what you th think would be great. So make sure you leave me a comment. I want to hear from you. Also, make sure you hit the like button because, you know, it helps. <laughs> um, I hope you've subscribed. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and enjoy this video. I hope you liked it. I'll see you guys soon.